Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's continue talking about common mistakes that people make when it comes to interpreting A-B testing results and using those results to make product launch decisions. In part one of the topic, I shared misconceptions and misinterpretations of certain states concepts. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend watching it first before watching this video. In this video, we will dive into the other category of mistakes, which is to assume the results are valid and reliable without doing sanity checks and make launch decisions based on invalid results. In reality, there are so many factors that can make the results unreliable. As a data scientist, we should be at least aware of those problems and be able to explain to others why those problems exist and how to deal with them. In this video, we will cover the three most common issues. Let's get started. One common issue that makes the results unreliable is sample ratio mismatch. It refers to the instance that the sample ratio between control and treatment is not as designed. For example, if the experiment design for ratio between the sample size of control and that of treatment is 1 to 1, after running the experiment, you observe the ratio is 1.01. .01. In other words, the control group has more users than the treatment group. Then you use a t-test to test if the number of users in the control group is different from that in the treatment group, and you obtain a p-value less than 0.05. You now realize that it's highly unlikely to observe such a ratio or more extreme condition on the design ratio. There are many causes of sample ratio mismatch. One is simply bugs or problems in assigning users to different groups while randomly assigning users based on the user ID may sound simple and straightforward, achieving proper randomization can be very challenging in reality. For example, many experiments have ramping up plans to make sure there's no risk when exposing users to a new feature. The ramping up plan typically starts with assigning only a small percentage of users in the treatment group, then gradually roll out to more users, and that could complicate the assignment of users. Things also get complicated when running multiple experiments in parallel, and one user might be assigned to multiple experiments. Bugs and errors are more likely to occur than running one experiment at a time. Another potential issue is if we are looking at a particular segment of users, and if the segmentation is based on some attributes that can change over time. For example, location. People may move to a different geographic location, so it will result in bias in allocating users to different groups. For example, you want to run experiments with a target population in the San Francisco Bay Area. So you assign users to the treatment group because his profile shows that he's in San Francisco. However, he has already moved to a different location, but he hasn't updated his profile yet. During the experiment, he updated his profile. So when you get the results and do the analysis, you need to filter out the users who are not in the target region. Besides all these things, it's also possible that the way the results are processed lead to sample ratio mismatch. For example, we have a data pipeline to filter out fraudulent users before analyzing the test results. And there is a bug in the pipeline that causes the false positive rate to be different in different groups. False positive means that we wrongly flag legitimate users as fraudsters. Say the false positive rate in the treatment group is higher this will cause a sample ratio mismatch. We have covered a few factors that may lead to sample ratio mismatch. Next, let's go over how to debug it if we observe such an issue. I'm gonna summarize the recommendations for debugging from the book Trustworthy Online Control Experiments because it's pretty comprehensive and practical. We can start with checking if there's any discrepancy upstream of the randomization point. An example would be, if our target users are those who end the checkout, we want to see if there's any difference between control and treatment for users upstream of entering checkout. In other words, before entering checkout. We can check if there's a gap between groups for users to land on the homepage, for users who put items in a shopping cart, and all these steps before users starting the checkout process. Another thing to check is if the variant assignment is done correctly. Are users allocated to different variants properly? If we use user ID to assign users, is the assignment truly random? Will any bias be introduced in this step? For example, if we find one group has mainly females and the other group has mainly males, 
then the assignment is unbalanced and neither group represents the overall population, so the result is likely to be inaccurate. We could also look into the data processing pipeline. A common source of sample ratio mismatch is bot detection and filtering. If there's any bug introduced in filtering bot traffic, it will potentially cause sample ratio mismatch. To further debug the issue, we can check different segments of the population. For example, we could look into the ratios per day and see which days have anomalies. We can also segment by other dimensions. For example, are the ratios different for new users versus returning users? Just to recap, the first factor that makes testing results unreliable is sample ratio mismatch. We have talked about different ways to debug it. Next, let's go over another common problem that invalidates testing results, and that is randomization units interfere with one another. There's one important assumption of A-B testing, which is that randomization units are independent and there's no interaction between them. This is called stable unit treatment value assumption. If there are interference or spillovers between different groups, then the result is definitely not reliable. The estimated treatment effect could either underestimate or overestimate the true treatment effect. In reality, it's common that this assumption is validated. For example, in social networks such as Facebook and LinkedIn, users' behaviors tend to be impacted by others in their social circles. For example, if a user's close friends all use Facebook, then she tends to use it more. Another violation of the stable unit treatment value assumption often happens in two-sided markets, such as eBay, Uber, and Lyft. In these markets, control and treatment groups compete for the same resources. If a new feature increases demand in the treatment group, then the treatment group needs more supply to fulfill that demand, and this will impact the supply in the control group because the resources are shared. Then what to do about it? Well, we could not really avoid the interference between groups, but we could predict where the interference will happen and take it into consideration in the experiment design phase. If such a possibility exists, we can change our design to isolate control and treatment units. For example, considering a treatment group in a completely different geographic location to avoid potential interference. If predicting the interference is very challenging, we should be able to monitor and detect it. And once the mechanism of interference is well understood, we could update the experiment design. In a previous video on A-B testing, I provide more solutions to deal with interference between groups. Make sure to check it out. The last common cause of unreliable results lies in changes in users' behaviors. Users react to new features or products differently. Some favor new things and tend to use more when they see a new feature, which is a novelty effect. But others would hate it, so they tend to use less, which is called a primacy effect. Now let me share with you a personal example. I once used an online grocery shopping app, and there was a new feature that every time you share a photo of the delivery, you get a little cashback so that you can use it for your next purchase. When I first saw this new feature, I thought it was so cool. I could get a little money back if I just take photos and share them. So I used this feature for the very first few deliveries I got. I took the pictures and shared them on the app. After doing it a few times, I realized the tiny cashback, if I remember correctly, is just a few cents. It's not worth my time at all, and I just stopped using it completely. This is a typical example of novelty effect. As a user who sees a new feature, I use it heavily at the beginning and then I just stop it at all. Note that both novelty and primacy effects are not stable, as you can tell from the example I just gave you. They happen only during the initial period after users see a new feature or product. While there's nothing we could do to prevent these effects, what we could do and should do is to monitor if such effects exist and quantify them so that we could filter them out when evaluating the real treatment effect. Now, at this point, I pretty much shared with you a lot of mistakes people make when it comes to interpreting A-B testing results and using those results to make decisions. As a data scientist who's leading the charge of A-B testing, it's our responsibility to educate others how to interpret data correctly and provide suggestions to deal with unreliable results. 
So beyond everything else I have covered in this video, I also have a whole playlist to help you learn A-B testing in depth. I have the fundamentals of A-B testing, selecting the right metrics, end-to-end -end examples to walk you through the whole process, and commonly asked interview questions and answers. So if you want to learn A-B testing to prepare for your interviews or to expand your technical knowledge, make sure that you watch my videos that are in this playlist. It's going to help you a lot. Anyways guys, if you got to the end of this video, thank you so much. If you like it, do let me know. Feel free to drop me a comment for any questions or feedback. I post a lot more content surrounding A-B testing and data science. So stay tuned, I will see you in the next video.